Emily Carr's The House of All Sorts, Chapter 2, Friction. Friction quickly scraped the glamour of newness from my house, even from the start of its building. My architect was a querulous, dictatorial man who antagonized his every workman. He had been recommended to me by an in-law. Like a fool, I trusted and did not investigate for myself making inquiry of the two Victoria families he had built for since coming out from England. Always impatient, as soon as I had decided to build, I wanted the house immediately. I drew up a plan and took it to the architect, asking what roughly such a building would cost. He took my plan, said it was concise and practical. If I would leave it with him a day or two, he'd look it over and return it to me with some idea of the cost so that I could decide whether I wanted to build it or not. A very good little plan, the man said, but naturally I could make a suggestion or two. In a few days he returned my drawing so violently elaborated that I did not recognize it. I said, but this is not the house I want. He replied tartly that I would have to pay him $200 whether I accepted his plan or not because of the time he had spent mutilating it unasked. I made inquiry from the other people he had built for, finding out he had been most unsatisfactory. I was too inexperienced to fight. I knew nothing about house building. Besides, I was at the time living and teaching in Vancouver. I could not afford to pay another architect as well as this one for his wretched plan. It seemed there was nothing to do but go on. The man hated Canada and all her living. He was going to show her how to build houses the English way. He would not comply with Canadian bylaws. I had endless trouble, endless expense through his ignorance and obstinacy. I made frequent trips up and down between Vancouver and Victoria. Then the man affected measles and stayed off the job for six weeks, babying himself at home, though he lived just around the corner from my half-built house. I had hundreds of extra dollars to pay because of the man's refusal to comply with the city bylaws and the building inspectors ripping the works out. It was a disheartening start for the house of all sorts, but when once I was quit of the builders and saw my way to climbing out of the hole of debt they had landed me in, I was as thrilled as a woman over her first baby, even if it is a cripple. The big boom in Victoria property tumbled into a slump, an anxious, shuddery time for every landowner. There had been no hint of such a reverse when I began building house building. Houses were then badly needed. Now the houses were half of them staring blankly at each other. Tenants were high-nosed in their choosing of apartments. The house of all sorts was new and characterless. It had not yet found itself, and an, an apartment house takes longer to find, it, find itself than do individual private houses. I had expected to occupy the studio flat and paint there, but now the house of all sorts could not afford a janitor. I had to be everything. Rents had lowered, taxes risen. I was barely able to scrape out a living. Whereas I had been led to believe when I started to build there, there would be a comfortable living. All the rentals together barely scraped out a subsistence. The house of all sorts was at least honest, even if it was not smart. People called it quaint rather than that. It was an average house built for average tenants. It was moderately made and moderately priced. It had some things that ultra-modern apartments do not have these days. Clear views from every window, large rooms, open fireplaces, as well as furnace heat. Tenants could make homes there. Lower East and Lower West were practically semi-detached houses. It takes more than sweet temper to prevent a successful landlady from earning the title of Old Crank. 
Over-awareness of people's peculiarities is an unfortunate trait for a landlady to possess, and I had it. As I approached my house from the street, its grim outline seemed to slap me in the face. It was mine, yet by paying rent, others were entitled to share it and to make certain de demands upon me and upon my things. I went up a long, steep stair to my door. The door opened and gulped me. I was in the stomach of the house, digesting badly in combination with the others of the house of all sorts. Sorry. I was in the stomach of the house, digesting badly in combination with the others the house of all sorts had swallowed, mulling round in one great heavy ache. Then, Along would come Christmas, or the singing of the armistice, or a big freeze-up with burst pipes, an earthquake, a heat wave, some universal calamity or universal joy, which jumped us all out of ourselves and cleared the atmosphere of the house like a big and bitter pill. <laughs>